afternoon. I'd like to thank you all. Thank you, Diana, for the opportunity. Thank you for being listening. Uh, just to say where I speak from, uh, I am an MA student uh, under the supervision of Valkyrie de Montemore. About to defend. About to defend. <laughs> I just Ooh. submitted. And um, my main research aimed at investigating the practices and discourses of two English teachers in public school settings in the city of Sao Paulo uh, to identify and interpret the concepts of language and culture that underline their practices, uh, to discuss them within the framework of multiliteracies, new literacy theories, to see whether these practices are or are not uh, meeting students' educational needs in the globalized changing world. Uh, world and my research communities were two public schools in the city, but one led for uh, one at the state public school and the other the city school. I called, I named the teacher, uh, the, the, those are different names, teacher Margarida and teacher Rosa. Rosa was the only English teacher in that city school uh, and Margarida for the period I was uh, watching, so she was the only teacher in the morning and in the evening. Uh, but there was there was also another English teacher. But just to situate, I followed one teacher, but it's the same teacher for all the classes in that school. Um, as for my research methodology, it's an ethnographic based research, interpretative, qualitative research. So interpretation was uh, very much considered, which was also a, a practice for me, a critical practice for me as a researcher. Uh, my main tools for gathering the data were classroom observation while I was with the teachers for one term, uh, about four months, a weekly. Uh, a lot of informal conversations with the teacher and students, but also a formal uh, interview, recorded interview with the teachers. <coughs> Surveys with the students, a questionnaire, semi-open one, when they could answer their opinions I'll talk about, and document analysis, the material the teachers use in class, as well as uh, the documents from the state, from uh, the city that uh, indicates what they should be doing in the classroom. Uh, before, I look. okay, I so from I'll just give a general idea because of time as well of what I ident identified as the main concept, but I also question that. So basically the predominant language uh, concept there was based on a structural abstract system, so very much based on grammar rules and fixed closed meaning on working with language. Uh, that was more, I, I observed that more in Margarida's classroom. As for Rosa, she has a very recent uh, education. She just graduated, was her first year in that school as official as a teacher. Uh, so language as a tool of communication, but also as with closed uh, meaning chunks of uses of language and things like that. Also a positivistic influence in the teacher, Margarida, she was very much worried about having all her students at the same level. So whenever she noticed that was uh, her lesson was problematic because she was also using the, doc the uh, material provided by the state for the English classes, she would come back to uh, contents that they had in the previous year. So uh, they still didn't learn verb to be, they still didn't learn uh, affirmative, uh, interrogative sentence formation. So she would go back to that as a way to uh, guarantee that her students were at the same level. Uh, as when it comes to culture views, uh, they were very much, as for Margarita, they were very much on na a national bound uh, view so she would there would be a moment to teach culture she would speak how people behaved in English speaking countries in a very closed mean way uh, and Rosa I didn't mention here but she would uh, be very much interested in the canon and uh, having the students to know Shakespeare and other uh, canonical uh, important authors in English um, <coughs> All right. At, however, they were doing this in the classroom. What intrigues me very much, Margarita, uh, Margarita was doing a very traditional uh, practice in her classroom with lots of grammar uh, exercises that were very meaningless for the students. Uh, 
at, at the same time, she was very engaged and very worried about making her practice meaningful, so she would get involved in projects. She submitted three projects for the state. She got funding for that. And uh, she got the first one, it was about graffiti. So she, the money she got, they got ink and covered the whole school with the graffiti art, <coughs> with the artist. But that would be done uh, on non school time, on the weekends after classes. So just few students could come by. She will also uh, afforded to bring a play about bullying to discuss that with the students. Margarita also uh, made this, she gathered some few students, like two or three students to prepare a short film about the school. They were making like the school history. But all of that was done without no connection to her English practice. So that was, uh, I, I asked her about, she was right, it's an interdisciplinary work, but she wouldn't connect directly to her English uh, practice. At the same time, she was taking in-service education, was her second graduate course. So she was very familiar with uh, more other languages, uh, approach to, uh, concepts of languages as social practice, uh, things like that. Uh, Rosa, uh, so this is a picture of the entrance of the state school, already with the, the graffiti art. Uh, Rosa, she had she just graduated. We we came from the same graduation <coughs> uh, undergraduate period, the, the same university, but we didn't meet. Uh, so she based herself her planning very much on the documents from the city. So uh, the official documents, how they they indicate her planning. She would base herself a lot on that. She uh, she would bring lots of multimodal materials to her classroom. So use images. Students would build posters with non-writing, uh, uh, just uh, they, when she was developing vocabulary, they would do that only with images. She also made, prepared a lesson on film reading, but that was kind of an excuse for linguistics aspects. So she would work with the film, but all her exercises were based on linguistic aspects of uh, teaching that language, so she didn't explore the film in its multimodality with other ways of making meaning. Uh, this, also I was interested, I was investigating the teacher's view, but I was also interested in the student's perspective. So I was all the time talking to them as I observed classes, but also applied a questionnaire for them to answer. And some of the outcomes, most of the students, one school was like 100%, the other more than 90 uh, they answered that they were really interested in learning another language, a foreign language, not only in English, you would, uh, they would be interested in that. As for the teacher's view, they tended to, to think their students were not interested in, in learning an, a different language. That wasn't, that wasn't an issue for them. Uh, again, the importance, of why would they learn that? What's the importance they would regard to that? Uh, more than 60%, so 62.8 in the state school and 69.3 <coughs> in the city, uh, would point that their main interest was to learn another culture, to see other ways of, uh, to engage in conversations with other people from different uh, cultures, from different ways of living, different from theirs. And less than about 18 to 22 would regard to job opportunities. I put that here because the teachers uh, perspective show that their main interest when I ask them why uh, are your students interested in learning English would say ah they would get better jobs for uh, develop their professional career but that was not what the students regard uh, that what they showed in their own answers on the questionnaire so the teacher were thinking they were interested in that in getting better job opportunities but that was not what they, they, they reported. Um, this data from my research, I think it poses some uh, challenges when it comes to teacher teaching, English teaching education. I put this challenge thinking more about uh, teachers than uh, uh, us as researchers because I was thinking about pre-service, in-service education. One would be that acknowledge that students' interests on learning about other ways of seeing and being the world through language, lear through language learning. 
because the teachers, they tend to, to think the students are not interested in learning a, a foreign language, and that has an impact on how, uh, on their practices, and the students are saying that, yes, they are, they really want to, to do that, they even mention, ah, I want to go to a language school, a language center, I started, things like that. Uh, understand and consider the concepts which language teaching practices <coughs> derives from. So teachers are very much interested when they go to pre-service, in-service education on how to do on the methodology, but uh, going a bit deeper, understanding what the concepts that underline that tells which type of education we are promoting. So there was a teacher, she was doing a lot of drill, uh, repetition exercises, that suddenly she thought, my students have to speak, and she just, just got the drills, and she started to do that in a very meaning, meaningless way. And she said, when I asked her why, she said, oh, uh, it, it worked for me. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it would work to, to my students as well. So that <coughs> repetition, uh, maybe she wasn't thinking what kind of education that drilling was promoting, and maybe it was just to be, to, to reproduce, not to come to society and be reproductive. They were not engaging in critical uh, awareness. Another one regarded culture as part of language. So they were seeing culture, what I, I could perceive that, they were very uh, disassociated from language. And when we already acknowledge that language cannot, be, it's not neutral, uh, it, that means that it, culture, it induces culture modes of representation that permits ideological and political values. So the way you use language itself, their choices are read, already, uh, it's already a teaching culture at the same time. Well, I think. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.